Josh Green here, four seconds out. Delighted to be joined by Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Pro to and returning podcast host. How are you doing, Eddie? I'm doing good. I'm uh, excited for a UK show. I think it's a great card on Saturday as well. A lot of 50 50 fights. Really looking forward to it. Dalton Smith, big step up. Somebody who's been in there in world championship fights. Three of them, in fact, if he passes this test, big fights to come. Yeah, I think it's a really underrated step up, really, because I think. Uh, you know, Zapid is very dangerous. Sometimes you bring a name over, and it's a clever bit of matchmaking, but it's never clever when they're a huge puncher. You know, you saw him fight Jose Vargas, top rank, top um, prospect. He laid him out. Baranchic, you know, had a great fight with Jose Ramirez. Coming towards the back end of his career, but very dangerous and very skilled. Manny Robles, Stitch Duran, I see all the faces in the crowd, and means they're coming for serious business. And you know, it's well beyond the levels that Dalton's boxed at before, so I think it's a really tough fight. From a matchroom point of view, would the plan to be see him within with Adam Azim in next, or is that something yeah, you don't I mean, see happening? You know, victory on Saturday would put him well beyond the levels of an Adam Azim, but we'd definitely be prepared to take a step back to fight Azim because it's a big fight domestically. You know, the fans want to see it, and um, we've already been told that Azim won't be fighting Dalton, but they're yet to pull out the purse bid, so. I'm not sure what's going on. I guess they'll pull out before Saturday, but they might be watching Saturday and see if Dalton wins. Because if he gets beat or if he gets stopped, they might fight him. But if he beats Jose Zapida, they definitely won't fight him. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd understand why, because he's proved that he's world level. I'd like to talk to you about the Boxer article, which was in the Times just last week. Um, Spud the links with a former Pakistani cricket match fixer all in the times what were your thoughts when when reading that um you know it's not my business it's never a good look obviously not a good look for sky but i don't read the article in full um you know i know the individual because we worked with him on the david hay tony bellew fight about eight years ago and that was the only fight we've ever been involved with and other than when i we had Joshua Boatsy at the end of his career and I turned up to a meeting and he was there representing Joshua Boatsy in the meeting. So um, we don't deal with him. We have no dealings or association with him. So not my problem. Good luck. And uh, we'll just crack on with our business. The article also talks about ticket money being exchanged and going into a sort of a mystery third party was, was the quote used there. Is, is it a bad look for boxing, yeah, do you think? Terrible, terrible. I mean, you know... But everyone runs their business in different ways. You know, someone operate with uh, you know extreme corporate governance and some don't. But I, again, I don't know the ins and outs of it. But on the outset, the headlines and, and the opening paragraphs don't look good at all. Two weeks now since Anthony Joshua was in the ring and we had some sort of fresh look at that tomorrow with Francis, yesterday with Francis Ngannou saying that he had an extra hour in the arena. Right, yeah. yeah, weird comments. I mean, firstly... I, you know, when he says that uh, that's what they do to try and tie you out, who's they? I mean, firstly, we didn't tell him what time to get to the arena. Saudi operations would have. What were they trying to do, tire him out? I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Every fighter gets told a time to be at the arena. They always tell you an earlier time because they want you there, talking they, broadcast, and you know they want to make sure you're not late. So you make your own decision about what time you actually go. If, some, if you're fighting at 2 a.m. and the broadcast team says, we want you there at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, the fighter might say, I want to get there an hour and a half before. Some fighters like to get there three hours before and have a little chill and a warm up. And you know, he's, made, he's obviously gone the time that they've requested AJ's made his own mind up about what time he would like to be there. And I don't know how he got tired in the changing rooms, but you know, if he was there for an extra hour, tough shit. I mean, ultimately, he got smashed to pieces by someone that was much too good for him. And that's what he should be saying. Not, I was a bit tired, I didn't quite feel myself in there. You didn't feel yourself in there because you got hit around the head and scrambled your senses and you didn't know where you were. But, you know, it is what it is. Disappointing comments, but... Um, sometimes fighters search for reasons why you know I can't understand what went wrong I just didn't dare you just got smashed and you got beaten by someone that was much better than you like every time you've even when Fury 
for Ngannou, you never heard any excuses from Fury. I actually spoke to Fury personally in, in Riyadh last time, and he told me reasons that he wasn't at his best that I've never heard him say once in an interview. Do you know what I mean? AJ, if you knew what AJ went through physically in the camp for the Ruiz fight, you wouldn't believe it. He's never mentioned it. And I wouldn't mention it because he wouldn't want me to. Do you know what I mean? That's a sign of a class man. No excuses. Beaten by the better man. And on you go. Not, I was like, oh. I mean, like, having an extra hour in the arena is really not the greatest of excuses. You know, having glandular fever the week of the fire, okay, I can get that one. But, you know, it's, um, yeah, disappointing comments, really. Philip Hergovic was a man mentioned to be possibly next in line for AJ with the, for the vacant title, but reports coming out yesterday that he could face Daniel Dubois. Uh, would that be possibly on the 5v5? I know Hergovic isn't officially with Matrim. It's, um, you know, we've worked with Hergovic for a long time, but we're not talking about individual fights. What we're talking about is putting fighters forward. So I'll give you an example. If the heavyweight division gets selected, we would put forward a heavyweight. We could put forward Philip Hergovic. They would be putting forward Joe Joyce or Daniel Dubois. So yes is the answer. If the heavyweight division was selected, that is a fight that could end up materialising, but you will only know at the official press conference. I have to ask you about Conor Ben. Are we any closer to hearing sort of the summing up and everything from the case? Or? No, you know, we hear imminent and um, our plan really is just to get the fights in place but have to decide where once we know, you know where we're going with the UCAD situation. So the Manny Pacquiao fight is still a fight that is there, ready to be done. There have been some fresh discussions with Mr Eubank, not via me but via Frank Smith because I let him take over that and um, yeah, you know, hopefully we'll be in a decision very soon to decide when and where. I saw Dillian White make his comeback over the weekend. He's obviously returning. Were you surprised at the differences in reaction from the public when Connor returned to what Dillian faced when he returned? Quite amazing. I mean, it's nearly two years now since the failed drugs test. I don't think a day has passed where it hasn't been discussed online. And... You know, Dillian's one after his fail in a, in a massively high-profile fight as well. Hardly got mentioned. You know, Dillian did his work, and I'm glad to see him back in the ring. But the way the two have been treated, and to be fair, Connor didn't play his hand perfectly in this situation. He's a young man. He's very emotional. Dillian's been through this process before. You know, Connor was a little bit lost at times. But yeah, I mean, anyone can see the way that he's been treated is much different. Um, is what it is, you know. Um, he's fought since. Connor's had two fights. Great to see Dillian White back in the ring and uh, hopefully see Connor Ben in a big fight soon. Why do you think they have been, been treated so differently? Part of it's down to how they've, um, you know, how they've dealt with it, for sure. Mm. You know, Dillian went super quiet. I didn't even hear from him and just worked away behind the scenes to, to go through the process and clear his name and kind of came out and he was quite vocal and, you know, it was Ben Eubank, you know, his dad was Nigel Bear. I don't know, there's, there's lots of things really, but um, it was quite a stark difference. Final one for you on Tyson Fury. You've talked about Anthony Joshua. Fury released some training footage recently, sort of pushing, doing some jumping, nothing too athletic. What did you make of it? It's athletic for him. Um, he looks in great shape. You know, I saw him in Saudi Arabia. Listen, Fury knows this is a real fight with Usyk and you know, hopefully he can get in the condition to win the fight and um, you know he'll come in ready. Cheers, Eddie. Thank you.